Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye one of the two 2020 Chemnitz Hanukkah colorways. We are going to use a Superwash MCN fingering weight yarn. Uh, this is a Superwash Merino cashmere nylon yarn that is luxurious and soft, and I'm so excited to play with layering colors on this yarn base. I really, really love this base. For Hanukkah 2020, I decided to play with depths of color and go from pastel to really saturated and have pops of bright in between. And I want to bring this theme into our colorway tonight. So we are going to play with our first attempt of this colorway. And I really uh, struggled when it came to picking a technique because I had so many ideas of what I wanted to do and the colors that I wanted to use. But ultimately, I came back to the love hearts. And I know this is something that I referenced in the Hanukkah series already, but I just caked up a skein from the first time I layered those hearts on yarn. And it is so fun and beautiful and such a great way to mix a lot of different colors together on one base in a very random, non-repeating way. And so that's what we are gonna be revisiting tonight. It also feels appropriate because currently it is the beginning of October 2020. I don't know what the holidays are going to bring, if I'm going to be able to see my family or what. And so pouring some love into this yarn feels appropriate for where we are for so many reasons. So let's go get started. We're going to do one version of this colorway and if it doesn't feel quite right, we can shift and balance, but I wanted to bring you through my color selection. I want the brights in this to be some purple pop and radioactive. Both of these break and we could, they actually combine really, really well and I think would just be fun. Uh, because even though we'll be adding small lines that we aren't moving around on the yarn, since these colors spread, that'll bring us some more bright through our colorway. So I know we are for sure gonna use these two colors. I also want to use some true black, uh, so I know that. And then I want to use a blue and a purple in the deep. Uh, calling back to night eight when I layered those deep colors on top of each other. Now, I'm inclined to not use dark navy because I use this all the time and I think I should avoid using it for the colorway today since it's something that I pull from a lot. Um, and then I considered using some more intense iris, but I think because there's a little bit more contrast between these and intense iris is fairly blue, I think that for the deeps, maybe we'll use blued steel, deep purple and black so that we have this as our color combination. And it feels pretty wild right now, but let's go see what we create. Um, the first thing I need to do is make up some stock solutions of each of these colors. I already have stocks of the True Black and Purple Pop, so I just need to make some stocks of these three off camera. And just as a reminder, a 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. For our brights, I want to dilute the dye uh, because I don't want to add too, too much of it. And we can adjust this amount as we start working on our project, but it's always easier to add more dye than it is to take some away. So for both the radioactive and purple pop, I added one tablespoon of the 1% stock solution to what I think is a four ounce bottle, tulip tie dye bottle, uh, and then filled the rest up with water. I am gonna use the straight 1% black, but I am gonna dilute the deep purple and blued steel by about half. So for those, I'll fill the bottle about half full, fill it up the rest of the way with water. And again, we can always adjust once we start, but these proportions are where I think we'll make a really good starting place. The reason why I chose to use these smaller bottles is they're easier to work with and the openings are a little bigger. You could open up the tips of these Dharma squeeze bottles more by just cutting the tip, but I like having it narrow for the stock and for storage, so um, using these little bottles is great. Our yarn base today is Capretta Superwash from Nitpicks. As I mentioned, this is a Superwash MCN. It is 80% Superwash Fine Merino Wool. 
10% cashmere and 10% nylon. In this four inch deep catering steam pan, I have added six cups of just plain tap water. And I'm gonna add two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar to start off. This is more acid than I guess is my typical concentration. A lot of times I start with two tablespoons per eight cups, but cashmere can take a little longer to absorb color. Even though I have found this particular blend to absorb uh, color really, really well. Okay. I have three skeins that have pre-soaked uh, for over 24 hours, and I'm adding this to our pan. And I actually think we are gonna want more liquid in here, because this is right now is very low immersion, and I want, I don't want the fiber to be as compressed because I want the dye to be able to move through a bit. I don't want it to spread too far, but I want it to move. I've brought over another six cups of water. So let's see how much I add. That was about three. So yeah, that's pretty good. This is more where I want things. A lot of the yarn is at the surface, but uh, you know, there it's it's not as densely packed, and there, you know, you can see the water if I move it, and I'm just sort of moving and spreading these skeins. I did add reusable nylon zip ties to our skeins. If you'd like to learn more about the yarn base, the pans, any of my tools and equipment, you can find affiliate links down in the video description. But now we're gonna heat this up so we can start dyeing. All right, we are warm, let's go. And let's start with the radioactive because this is the color that I am the least sure about including. And we've got hearts with some dots. I'm not using a lot. I'm using just a little itty bitty bit um, just because I think that it could add some fun contrast in there. Now I'm going to intentionally layer the purple pop on top. And there's a lot more of the purple pop. And where they layer, it goes a little bit orange, but I don't think that that is a problem. The thing I really, really enjoy about this version of layering is that uh, it makes things even more random. When I do lines across, it still leads to a beautiful colorway, but this just randomizes it a lot more. I have a lot less control over it. Okay, I think, right now I cannot tell which color is which with these darkest ones. So let's just start with one heart. Okay, I think this is our black. <laughs> I hope that's the black. Um, let's see what we've got here. Okay, that is our deep purple, which is looking really deep. And this should be the blued steel, which on camera right now, I don't think they look very different, but what I want to do um, and of course, let's see, I think I have that black blue, purple. Oh my goodness, I can't tell. I lost track of them again, I should label them. All right, I'm actually gonna let this sit for five minutes to see how much of a difference I can see between these three colors. Um, they are very, very, very subtle right now, but I think in the little bit of spread that we will see from each of them, we will get more of a difference. But I might end up deciding to dilute the purple and blue steel a bit more, so we will see. I don't think you can tell on camera. I can tell in person. I can see a difference, and remember that when things are wet, colors look deeper. And so I believe my I believe that we will be able to see and pick out more of a difference between these three deep, deep, deep colors once the yarn is dry. So that is what I'm saying I'm going for. I am a little undecided on the green. Gonna be honest. Gonna add 
some more purple pop, which is risky. <laughs> is risky. And um, off camera, I did label our yarn. And so that is some black. Uh, let's come in with some blued steel. And then some deep purple. Deep purple is an interesting color because it absolutely, absolutely looks brown. It looks very, very brown until you start to get some heat to it. So it makes it a little hard to tell. I, I don't know guys. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Darn. Um, oh man. Okay, I am going to carry on. I will have a better sense. <sighs> I don't know. So let me talk about where my head is at. I wanted to add the green because I wanted something a little bit unexpected. I didn't want it to feel just so obvious, but we also have the white in there. So, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't have a ton of room for error. I like the direction this is going, but maybe it doesn't need that green. Uh, maybe the green is just a little too much of a contrast. Um, I wanted, uh, I wanted it to, I wanted it to feel more different, but I'm going to wait five minutes to let these sort of sink in and absorb. Then we'll start flipping, adding more color, and we'll see where this goes. If we like the green, if I want to not use the green and just stick with the purple pop and the other three deep colors. I mean, the thing with purple pop that is fun is that it breaks. So in each of these lines, we see that purple with the pink halo. And that is already giving us something really, really fun um, for our yarn in the contrast. And so uh, <laughs> maybe the green is just making this a little too Halloween, but right now it does feel very almost spider webbish. So we will <laughs> see. Oh my gosh, you guys. Because <laughs> last year I tried a colorway and then I was like, oops, this feels very Halloween. Um, so, okay, <laughs> I'll wait five minutes and then we'll flip. The time isn't done. I'm loving the witchy vibes, um, but I brought over some intense iris, uh, which I diluted pretty similar approximately. I just filled it up to about here, um, a little over a tablespoon. And I am bringing this in as sort of something to bridge the gap a bit. Um, it is not as deep as our deep colors. There we go. And not as bright as the brights. And so I think that having something more in the middle is bringing the contrast down a bit. Plus it allowed me to fill in some more of those neutral areas. And I don't think I'm minding the green as much anymore. It still might feel a little Halloween-y, um, but I like where that's going for. So if I end up doing this again without the green, when I see how things look uh, once this is dry, I think that'll help. I mean, I think I've pretty much decided that uh, the way I want to proceed with this is finish this batch of three, wash it, dry it overnight, and then tomorrow I will decide how to proceed. But I think that that intense iris layered in here really, really helps sort of bring together uh, that bright and dark contrast. And so I like where we are a lot more right now. All right, but now I added yarn or color, so let's wait five minutes again. I feel like a lot of times I tend to go really, really safe 
with my colors. And so I wanted to bring in something a little bit unexpected for this yarn, which is why I was like, ooh, I should use this bright, bright green. Uh, I think it may have also worked better if I had cho chosen maybe not radioactive, but if I had chosen a green more just like, a, not even the Kelly green, but like a grass green or something like that, something that's more of like a truish green, uh, that might have made it feel a little bit more like floral versus feeling a little Halloween with the neon. But I wanted to play with the neons. So I like what is happening. I just worry about it feeling too Halloween, um, which seems to be my Hanukkah concern, especially since I am dyeing yarn in October. And I do have a vision for a Halloween colorway that I guess does involve like purple pop, radioactive, fluorescent safety orange, and black. So maybe because I have this Halloween vision in my head, that's why this is kind of giving me some Halloween vibes, but maybe it isn't giving you Halloween vibes. I don't know. Uh, but I think that that intense iris did help. Uh, so let's see where we end up. <laughs> I am liking this more and more and more. And oh, I guess I, ooh, I guess I didn't even check before I flipped where it needs more color. But as like I lift it up, just look at the way that it spreads. Like that's just so cool looking. Ugh, I love layering. And we've got more and more layering that we will be doing um, because this will need. You can see how little color we have on this side. So I think in the end, it's really gonna come down to how different the purple, blue, and black feel from each other. I think that that is gonna make or break how I feel about this colorway. Um, and especially the pops of green in here. I also want to make sure I don't cover up the green too much because if I cover up the green too much, um, then, whoops, if I cover up the green too much and then it's only in some random places, then that might just feel odd. Okay. I'm using up a fair amount of purple pop, but okay, that's the other thing we also have to worry about, not using too much purple pop, Rebecca. Okay, so black. And when I'm doing this, oh, I definitely got up there. Um, when I'm adding these hearts, what I am making sure, uh, what I am attempting to make sure is that I have a little bit of each color on all of these strands. Uh, and so that will help with uh, the balance. Now, and here's our purple, which is looking fairly brown right now. Um, if, you know, there's definitely gonna be some parts of each of the skeins that have more and less of each color. And that is just the reality of um, this technique, but also part about what makes it really, really fun. Um, and it's just fun that, you know, you we don't know exactly where things are quite yet. Okay, and now let's come in with our intense iris that is nice and diluted. And I'm paying some attention to where we have white patches and so sometimes it's hard because I, with doing the hearts, I don't have quite as much control as I might um, at times when I'm doing lines. But that's also part of what makes this so much fun. Ooh, ooh, what? There is a rust color over there. All right, I'm thinking that mystery rust from from way back in the day, maybe. It is a combination of some pink and green, or it could come from that blued steel. Um, interesting, interesting. All right, I am gonna let this sit for five minutes and then we will come and flip again. 
After the five minutes were up, I flipped the yarn again, um, paying special attention around the zip ties to open up the skeins inside out, looking for large patches of white. White is okay in this colorway, but I want to avoid large uninterrupted patches that would, could feel like a little bit of a mistake if they were left behind. And I layered the colors, waiting about five minutes in between each time I shifted things around again. And I did this until I was satisfied with the amount of coverage, color coverage that we had on our yarn. Okay, I think we're probably close to being done. And I actually am really happy with it. Um, okay, I do see a patch here where I want to add some more. Um, I'm just opening up. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's open up this one. Oi! Okay, there's some. <laughs> Hello, white patches. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. See, just when you think you're done, sometimes you find like a few other spots where you just want a little more color. And again, like the white, it's not bad or anything, but I just want a little bit and adding some little, I'm not adding even hearts right now, just a few pops of the green. Um, and then I can come in, add some pink. Oh, I almost added that on, or I added that on the green. That's good. Um, and then I'm going to come in with some blued steel. And as I'm adding these hearts, I'm focusing on areas that maybe need a little bit more color. There we go. All right, I think now I'm probably gonna call it. You can keep adding more and more and more and we're gonna lose more and more contrast, but <laughs> I think that that could be a good thing and help. And it still remains to be seen how I feel about the pops of green. But all right, I'm gonna wait five more minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, I am going to turn off the heat completely now. And the colors are actually pretty well set. Um, yeah, pretty well. I like it a lot more. I'm not feeling the Halloween vibes that I had before. Um, I feel, I'm really excited and Oh man, but I'm excited. I, I'm curious to know what you guys are going to think about the pop of green. Um, that little bit of pop of unexpected color, which I mean, I don't know if you guys can really on camera appreciate how this color is looking, but I just turned off the heat and I'm actually going to leave things here in the pan to just cool off for a while and then I'll remove the yarn and then we can wash it. Um, but I do want to get a bit of a sense of what this looks like dryish before we proceed to make a bunch more. So once everything is cooled off and completely room temperature, then we will get ready to wash it. The colorway no longer feels very neon to me, but it is very like purple and dark. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the deep patches are gonna feel anything but black. <laughs> Um, but I like the color, so I'm not mad. And it definitely is not feeling as Halloween-y to me. And okay, first pass, no bleeding. That is great. The purple pop, you always worry about bleeding. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of some clear dish soap. Um, but we use probably about one tablespoon a purple pop on all 300 grams of yarn. And so that isn't too much purple pop. Um, so I am enthused. 
Oh, I think this colorway is really, really fun. And I'm definitely not getting the same Halloween vibes <laughs> that I did at first, where we had the like super high contrast. I'm curious. Well, I'm not seeing any bleeding, so I'm going to go ahead and put this yarn through my spin dryer and then hang it up to dry and attempt to take a closer look at the color. I tried to go film a little update outside, but uh, it was so bright that it was hard for me to see what you could tell, see on camera. There's no question that we see our, tr our black, we see some of the navy from our blued steel, and some of that deep magenta in here. In addition to this more blue that is that iris. And then of course, our green, and then bits of, of purple pop that is all over the place. I think overall, a lot of the color is less saturated than it looked while, like it, while it was still wet, but I really, really like it. And I am going to move forward with this colorway. There are many reasons why a spin dryer is awesome when it comes to dyeing yarn. You can remove a lot of liquid quickly, which means that your project can overall dry faster. But even then when it's only slightly damp, you still have a better sense of what the colors will look like when it is dry versus when it is completely wet. Because with some colors and especially some yarn types, this can make more of a difference and it can be hard to distinguish between some really, really deep tones. And oh, I am so happy. So I reset uh, my stainless steel pan and started dyeing this colorway again, uh, using maybe to use approximately the same amount of dye as I did before. Uh, I used one full bottle of the violet, about one and a half of the bottles of the intense iris, just a tiny bit of the black, maybe half of the those small bottles for each of the blued steel and deep purple uh, for three skeins of yarn. Uh, so hopefully that proportion is a little bit helpful if you wanted to try to recreate something like this at home. But ultimately, there will be some differences within dye lots, um, just because even within one pan, just because of where things are located and the randomness going into this. But uh, once again, I waited about five minutes in between each flip and we dyed a lot more yarn. I think I intended to keep all of this MC Superwash MCN yarn separated into the separate dye lots that I created, but ultimately they are so similar and the variations within one dye lot mean that one skein might be more similar to one that was in a different pan than one that was in the same pan, just from the randomness of the approach. There are some where we have a little more green, some where the green is a bit more subtle, but then you flip and you see the pops. Um, and it's overall really, really fun. I think, goodness, this isn't exactly what I was going for, but I really like the result. And I think that those little hints of green give it something really special. I'm not planning to knit a swatch for this video, but we have in here, we've got our deep purple, we've got some of that blued steel in the navy, there are pops of black, there's the green, there's the purple pop, and then we've got some more of the um, iris all over. And I think that it is just really, really surprisingly soft compared to like, there's a lot of contrast and things in here, but ultimately there's also a softness to it because of the way that the colors did blend together. Now, if we look at the finished yarn and compare it to early stages of dyeing with the high contrast between the bright and the dark, why did things get more blended? Well, it's because we layered the color more and more and more. And as you do that, things tend to blend and become a little bit softer. Now, there's a chance that this Superwash MCN might have needed a little bit more acid and time in between flips if I wanted to keep those colors more separate. But I think we created something really, really beautiful today, and I'm really, really happy with it. I mean, just imagine 
these specks and splotches as little stitches and it mixing together in a garment. And the best part is that this is a non-repeating colorway. So there might be some small patches of pooling, but overall it shouldn't pool, I think. <laughs> I suppose it depends on the project, but really it's so random, it should not pool. Not that pooling is a bad thing at all. I just know that personally I happen to enjoy uh, more randomly mixed colors and sometimes when colors pool in one section and not others I start to get a little bit stressed <laughs> in projects. There's times when I like pooling and I go for it intentionally and then there's times when I want things to be more random and this colorway is intended to be more random. Well here we have it, the end to the last dyeing project of Hanukkah 2020. I really hope that you have enjoyed all of the colorways that I created this year. I had so, so much fun dyeing all of this yarn and, well, I've got ideas for next year already. Let me know what you thought about the whole series down in the comments below. But wait, wait, we're not quite at the end. I know Hanukkah ended a couple days ago, but we've got one more bonus video, the vlog, the behind the scenes looks at my thoughts, and everything that went into this. Now, I'm still in the process actually right now of filming the vlog, and so we'll see where it ends up. But uh, I go into all the little fun extras that I'm making, some concerns I had about colorways along the way, and yeah, just some thoughts during the whole thing. And so if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about what went into this and all the things that I couldn't share because I didn't want to give spoilers, then stay tuned for tomorrow night's video. I am really excited with this colorway. I would love to see it knit up. And when you make something out of this yarn, please share pictures on Instagram and tag me. And tag the picture Chemnitz Hanukkah. Um, I'd love to see what you create with either the full skeins or the mini skeins or a combination thereof. No pressure, obviously, but I'll be really excited and hope to see what you create. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss new videos. We are not done with 2020. In addition to the vlog, there's still going to be videos coming out for the rest of the year. And so, yeah, you don't want to miss any of it. And if you did miss a night of Hanukkah, there is a whole playlist for the 2020 Chemnitz Hanukkah, so you can go back and watch the whole series. And actually, there's also playlists for last Hanukkah, 2019 and 2018, so you can go back and watch those series <laughs> all the way through as well. If you missed out on a Hanukkah sampler, but you love the yarn that I dye and want to help support the content here on the channel at the same time, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I have hundreds and hundreds of skeins of yarn featured in my videos, so you can get some yarn, support the content, and then go back and watch me dye it all over again, which is just really fun and I think unique. Thank you so much for watching everyone and happy Hanukkah.